In this video, we're going to talk about heat transfer <coughs> um, and the various modes that we have. Um, the, uh, this is related to actually what we were looking at before, which is um, why items at the same temperature, so for instance, a chair, a, a ch um, different parts of a chair uh, in a you know in, in a room will feel hotter or colder. So you know, pieces of metal feel very cold. Um, and it, when you're in a when you're in a room temperature room, whereas the cloth will feel basically not that warm, or basically just feel room temperature. Um, and we'll find out basically why that is, um, and we'll in particular talk about the different types of heat transfer: um, conduction, convection, and radiation, um, which you probably heard of them. Um, it turns out that actually uh, almost all processes, basically any time we're having heat transfer, it almost always involves a, some combination of all three. Um, where s and different ones basically become more important depending on the temperature and various other things. Um, and what we're interested in looking at is the rate of heat change. So uh, Q is basically the heat change or the change in thermal energy. Um, and then if we just divide that by time, again, energy over time, which again is power. It's just another type of power. And so we're just looking for basically how fast um, they're radiating. It's going to be in joules per second or watts. Um, so our normal uh, units for power. Um, so first, let's talk about conduction. Uh, um, this is uh, uh, the the way I like to think about the 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 equation behind conduction is by doing what I call the which will burn you faster quiz. I find that most people are very good at thinking about these things um, and thinking about how uh, how fast they'll get burned by various things. It helps you understand where our heat transfer equation comes from. So we're gonna the, the the way the quiz works is this: um, you think about uh, which will burn you ha faster if you stick your hand in it. All right, so um, let's make sure you're playing at home, and we'll go. Uh, so if we have a hundred degrees C pot of oil or a two hundred degrees C pot of oil, I think most of you uh, can figure out that um, the two hundred degrees uh, pot of oil it will burn you faster than the hundred degree pot of oil. Um, uh, so what's important in this case is that um, how fast heat gets transferred to your hand depends on the change in temperature, the difference in temperature between, in this case, the oil in your hand. Um, the hotter it is, the faster heat transfers into your, into your hand. That's why we can touch things that are 70 degrees uh, C, um, but not 200 degrees C. And why, in particular, so you know, I, you, you know that your hand can get burned by a 100 degrees C pot of oil and a 200 de degrees C pot of oil, but we know that the 200 degrees C pot of oil will burn it faster. Um, and, and so uh, that's related again, just to the fact that it's much hotter and that it transfers heat faster. So it's not only that, it's, that it can raise it to a higher final temperature, but it also will raise it, um, raise your, your hand to 100 degrees Celsius, for instance, faster than the 100 degrees C pot of oil. Um, how about one gallon of 100 degrees C oil or five gallons of 100 degrees C oil. If you just put your hand in either one of those, well, it's kind of a trick question. They're actually both gonna be the same. In other words, the amount of stuff that you have um, doesn't actually matter that much. Uh, so a gallon of oil, five gallons of oil, 200 gallons of oil, doesn't really matter if it's at 100 degrees Celsius as long as it isn't small enough that um, we cool it down with our hand. Um, uh, as long as it's big enough that it basically stays at 100 degrees C, it doesn't matter how much of it is to actually burn us. How about a 100 degree pot of oil or sticking your hand in a 100 degree um, oven? Not touching the oven, by the way, just putting it in. Well, any of you who have baked has probably put your hand in a much hotter than 100 degree C oven. Um, that's around 212 uh, Fahrenheit. Um, that's about as low as ovens go. I put my hands regularly into 300, 400 degree C ovens um, where I would never put my hand into a 300, 400 degree pot of oil. And this is, of course, due to um, something specific to the material, basically. We know that some things are better at conducting heat into our hand than others. Um, and so to, to think about how fast things will transfer heat to us we're going to need some combination of things specific to the material, something that has to do with the change in temperature, but that doesn't actually include mass. Um, and so the final equation is actually this uh, right here. Um, 
it's that uh, the, the, the power, how fast the power is transferred, is just equal to K, where K is this thing that has to do with the material called the thermal conductivity. Um, and then we have the temperature difference. Basically, the hotter the thing is, the faster power is going to be transferred. And then this just says that basically um, the more area I have, the more energy is going to be transferred. So in other words, um, I'm going to have more uh, he heat transferred to me if I stick, let's say, my entire arm in rather, rather than my, uh, just my pinky finger. Of course, that makes sense um, because uh, it's flowing uh, to all of me rather than uh, just, just the pinky finger. And this last D part, that's the thing is, that's the, the, the most interesting thing. What that's saying is, for instance, is that if I stick my hand in a pot of boiling water, the outside, um, which has a very small distance to travel, gets hotter much very quickly, whereas the inside of my hand actually doesn't get very hot at all. It takes some time to actually get hot um, because it has to travel some distance D. Um, and so this basically has to do with the idea that, um, uh, that heat is traveling from the hot to the cold, and it depends again on this area, basically how far it has to travel, and the temperature distances, and what the material is made out of. So it's all contained in this one equation. So basically the power, is how fast heat is getting transferred, is something is proportional to basically the, what's called the thermal conductivity, how fast it goes, the area that's flowing through, um, the temperature difference, and it's inversely proportional to the distance. In other words, the further away you are from T2, uh, and the 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 um, the the, uh, the the less quickly it basically is traveling. So um, let's look at uh, some thermal conductivities, um, uh, and you can just tell why um, uh, why these things kind of exhibit the things we do. Um, uh, you notice that um, steel, uh, for instance, has. Um, a, uh, a high thermal conductivity, for instance, uh, not as high as silver, but uh, all the metals tend to have very high conductivity compared to, for instance, glass or concrete or things like this, um, or any kind of, um, you know, if you take wool, uh, which is the whole way down here, uh, 0.04, and that's why, for instance, when you put your hand on a piece of metal, um, it feels cold because you're basically having heat conducted from your 37 degrees C hand to the 25 degree C um, room uh, much faster by the steel than by the wool or the cloth, which actually isn't taking your, um, the, the water away from you or the, the heat away from you very fast at all. Um, water has about a medium conductivity. Um, again, you don't want to stick your hand in it. Um, of course, things like wool and down and all these things that we actually um, put uh, use as clothes um, uh, or clothes to keep you warm, so we tend to have wool and feather and down feather jackets um, have very low thermal conductivity. Basically, they um, they keep us uh, warm by not allowing a lot of conduction to happen, and most of them do it actually um, by creating air. So, for instance, the reason down feathers are so has such a low conductivity is because they basically create a lot of space where there's air. Um, uh, they basically provide a rigid way to keep a lot of air in there and air has a very low conductivity. Uh, by the way, one thing to point out is the big difference between the conductivity, for instance, of glass, um, which has a thermal conductivity of around one or so, um, and air, which is much lower, it's at 0 0.02. Um, this is why basically we have double paned windows um, or why storm windows work. Um, storm windows basically allow you to trap some air between two pieces of glass um, so that you can basically um, uh, lower uh, the amount of um, heat that basically comes out of your uh, glass windows. Um, well, actually, uh, we can you can do a calculation and see that actually glass is a pretty poor um, insulator, actually, uh, and that's why um, if you have a single pane window, if you're in a really old home, uh, the glass will always feel very cold and often even be frosted over. Also explains pot holders, which are normally made of wood or or cotton or something like this, which um, uh, provides a, it allows you to basically grab something that isn't steel and keep yourself from getting burned. It also explains why you never want to get your pot holders wet. Um, if you get your pot holders wet, you go from something that has about a 0 0.04 thermal conductivity, let's say, for a, a cotton or wool pot holder. If you get it wet, um, you basically increased the thermal conductivity by over a factor of 10 
anyone who's ever tried to grab something with a wet pot holder has experienced this um, and found that you get a burned hand. Um, okay. So don't let your pot holders get wet. Um, just a quick note, which is that um, uh, the um, uh, what often, uh, if you, if, for those of you who are kind of interested in um, uh, environmental studies, things like this, um, what what people often use in building materials and things like this are what called what are called R values. Um, if you notice, uh, K is the thermal conductivity. Um, if you take K, the thermal conduct conductivity, and take into a, account the fact that you also have um, this L, which is basically how thick the material is, you can combine them together and, and realize that if you have um, a, a, um, a low thermal conductivity and a high thickness, um, you'll, you'll make your power, basically how much power you're radiating or you're conducting really small. Um, and so they put this in terms of R values where it basically takes the inverse of K over L. Um, and, and what it does is then it makes it in this way where um, as your R value goes up, uh, heat conducts very slowly. And so you often see this in, um, especially insulation, for instance, um, uh, will give you an R value, which just gives you a, 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 an idea of how fast basically it'll radiate um, uh, things. And you see the fiberglass, uh, four inches of fiberglass has this really high 12 R value, where glass has this low kind of one um, R value if it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, convection is the second way that we can move around heat. Um, uh, the, the, the way that we move around heat by convection is uh, basically just, this is kind of, a, to me, one of the most um, uh, not so interesting uh, way of, of moving heat. Uh, basically the idea is this, is that as you get things hot, if you get air hot, we know that, um, uh, so hot air is actually less dense. Uh, if hot air is less dense, that means it rises. Uh, as we know, things with lower density rises from our, um, from our buoyancy. Um, and so what you end up doing is you end up having hot air, um, let's say from your radiator rise, um, then the cold air falls back down and then it comes over here and gets heated by that. And this is a quick way to basically heat it. That way you don't have to heat all this stuff through conduction. Uh, basically you end up creating flow um, of the air. The other way that we can, um, that we can get uh, convection um, that we often do is just by a fan. And that's why all your heaters uh, let's say your portable heaters, things like that, all have fans on them. Basically, they just force this type of convection to happen. Finally, this radiation. Uh, it's important to note that this is not the stuff that comes from nuclear bombs, although that's often also called radiation. But in this case, um, it's things that heat uh, heat them up by uh, transferring through light. It's basically a type of um, it's it's a type of light, but it's in the thermal range, it's in the infrared. Uh, which heats things up. Um, you will notice this uh, many different ways. Um, one is if you stand uh, under the sun, you get much warmer. Uh, that's because of, um, because of radiation. Uh, there's no conduction or convection from the sun because there's no air between the earth and the sun. It's just vacuum. Uh, so it's just radiating uh, um, uh, heat to us. Uh, other places are bonfires. If you've ever stood in front of a bonfire, you'll notice, or a very large fire, you'll notice that um, you get hot on one side but not hot on the other side. Um, that's not due to the conduction. The conduction is about the same all over the place. The, the, the difference between your front and back isn't that big of a deal. But um, just like uh, if you look at someone's face from the front or the back or from the side that's being being lit up by the fire and the side that isn't being lit by the fire, you notice that someone's you know, you know, face, for instance, is brighter when they're facing the fire and not as bright when they're not facing the fire. It's the same thing with the thermal radiation that's coming off of the fire. Um, your, your face is getting, you know, that if you're facing the fire, you're getting a lot of thermal radiation. If you're not facing it, you're not. Um, other things, electric ranges. So if you ever turned on um, your, uh, your kitchen uh, stove, uh, if you have an electric one, you notice it glows orange and you can feel the heat from very far away. Um, again, this is, this is true of, of a, a ton of things. You normally, it's most noticeable when things are quite warm uh, because radiation uh, as we'll find out, um, uh, increases a lot with the, with the size of the temperature. Um, so, and here's the equation. Um, the power, basically how fast you're being, having things radiated, is just equal to, um, uh, the, the important thing to note is this, this T to the fourth. So basically as things increase in temperature, they, they increase the amount of power that they radiate 
is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. So it's a really fast increase of radiation with the temperature. Again, the area matters um, for the same reason that matters with the, um, with the conduction. Um, and that just if you have more surface area that, that can take in the, the heat, um, you'll get more stuff radiated. The new things are these E and the, the, um, this, this constant here, this sigma. This is just a, what's called the Stefan Boltzmann constant. It's not really important. It's just a number that gives you the right, um, the right units and the right number at the end. Uh, this E, however, is important. This is an emissivity. This basically has to do with how well you um, absorb or emit uh, um, light um, and absorb or emit uh, thermal, thermal energy. Um, completely black, black objects have uh, this E equal to one. Um, co completely reflective objects have this E equal to zero. Um, and most things uh, have things that are um, uh, somewhere in between. Um, and so it's just related to basically how well you collect or reflect light. Um, again, white things that are white uh, tend to um, have very low emissivities, uh, whereas, whereas things that are black have very high ones. This is why you, if you're in the sun, you feel hotter when you're wearing a black t-shirt rather than a white t-shirt. Basically, has everything to do with the emissivity. It also has to do with one of the reasons that um, people are worried about the solar, um, the, uh, a lot of the ice caps melting is that the ice caps are nice and white and reflect a lot of the sun, whereas the ground is not white and it's you know dark, and so it absorbs a lot of sun, and people are worried that as the ice caps melt, uh, there's gonna be even more absorption of, um, of heat, and the, the global warming is basically gonna, gonna increase even at an even faster rate. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the effects that people are really interested in when looking at things like global warming. Um, it's also um, just a final little side note. Uh, the the um, the reason that uh, one of the reasons that these thermal blankets work, it's actually a small effect. But one of the small effects that you have from these thermal blankets that you always see marathon runners wearing um, is that they have these little reflective ref uh, that they're very reflective. Part of the reason that they're so reflective is so that they can reflect your heat back into you, um, and that's part of what keeps you warm. There's also an effect of just the insulation of having a piece of plastic around you. The actual heat lost or gained from radiation depends on the actual difference in temperature uh, because um, this, this equation that we saw, the Stefan Boltzmann equation, um, tells you how fast you're both radiating heat and um, uh, how fast you absorb heat from the outside. And so what ends up happening is that when you're asking, let's say, how fast, um, whether you're heating up or cooling down, um, you need to look at the uh, at the, the temperature of the one thing and temperature of the other thing and subtract them um, to the fourth power. And so, for instance, if, if you're asking how fast do I absorb heat from the sun, you put in the sun's temperature, which of course is enormous, and my temperature, which is, you know, uh, around 37 degrees, um, and this all has to be in Kelvin. Um, and then uh, when you subtract that, you can find out how fast you basically absorb the heat. Um, you can also do this in reverse. Um, so, for instance, if I'm standing in a room temperature room where the walls are all at room temperature or, you know, what is that, 298 Kelvin, and I'm at, um, you know, at some higher temperature like, uh, you know, 310 Kelvin or so, um, you raise both those a fourth, subtract them, and you'll find out how fast I radiate heat to uh, the room temperature. And we'll do a bunch of examples for that in our class um, uh, later. I hope all that is quite clear. Um, that's the whole idea that you got conduction, convection, and radiation. Please go through any ones that were a little unclear. Um, uh, these are actually some of the most straightforward equations we have. We basically only have one equation. You use one for the conduction, one for the radiation. Um, there's actually no equation for convection. It's just an idea. Um, and so uh, think about them, make sure you understand them, and then we'll talk about them in class and probably do some problems. Okay, thank you, and I'll uh, see you in class.